This is the Bar Stewards Enquiry. You are talking absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. In, in what way? You are an underachiever in life. You were, I saved your bacon one time. You were gone. You had to that well. I couldn't save you. I, I said, oh, no, but you said the right thing. But well, that's why you don't know anything about racing, John. I, I didn't say I do. Right? I'm saying that... What, what have you contributed to racing? You are one of these take-out merchants. Take out all you can. And a very warm welcome to the Bastards Inquiry Weekend Podcast, where this one is a little bit of a damp squib. We've got two all-weather cards, or have we? Two inspections in the morning with a very cold night forecast in prospect for, for both Cheltenham and uh, Cheltenham. I've got Cheltenham on the brain. Chelmsford and Lingfield. <laughs> Get it right. And joining me tonight, well, it's the three musketeers, because tonight, we're missing uh, the famous John Lang. He's decided he wants to go to a party. I have no doubt this party <laughs> would would contain uh, vast uh, amounts of Colombian and uh, uh, ladies <laughs> of the night. So, 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 so good old Jonas Lang has left us this evening for only the second time since the inception of Bar Students. And uh, so he's, he's to be commended for his, uh, his appearance levels. But tonight he's not with us. But instead... It's Andy Richmond and Quentin Franks. Good evening, chaps. Good evening, evening Lee. Yes, Good evening. yes. We can we can tackle this scrap tomorrow, can't we? It's like, roll your sleeves up. We can do it. It's the best bets round, folks. And for new listeners, this is the round where we go one, two, and three points uh, towards our best bets uh, for Saturday's racing. And we will certainly do our very best to line your pockets with silver. So, Quentin Franks, kick us off underwear with your one-pointer. My one point a league comes in the 1440 at Chelmsford. Um, I'm keen to kind of take on Law Paramount here. Poor on the clock bar is, is run early in January. Seemed a bit doggy hanging left last time out. Um, downgrade on the jockey front, Jack Mitchell off, Cameron Noble on, and he's kind of four to six, eight, eight to 11 now. Um, the one I'm going to have a pl- one, one point on is free solo. Obviously, back class in in spades to be honest but it's tumbled down the weights kind of shown signs that he's ready to come to the boil then not he's inconsistent but the blinkers go back on felt he shaped really well on his last run at Kempton ended up three deep at various points uh, did well to kind of be beaten three and, three and a bit lengths uh, former that looked solid Wizarding came out and ran well the other day Kempton uh, Satin Snake who came third that day went and beat Wizarding form has a solid enough look to it uh, down one pound for what was a promising enough run. Looks to be enough pace on to bring him into the race. And I kind of thought 11 or 2 was a, a shade overs. Interested you found that because I, I Lord Paramount was one that uh, it was an info bet uh, two starts ago. You know, they, they couldn't have it be blah, blah, blah. And it fell I in it as well. Yeah. And it, <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it fell in one of these really enormous holes like a crater about a furlong out despite the run of the race. Then it wins a very poor heat next time. And and you look at St. Lawrence, the uh, the brother, the, the, you know, there's, there's something about these. I'm not really keen on them, the family. And, and I, I think there's, there's a hole in this horse. There's no way I would take eight to 11 that. I tried to find one, Quentin, against it. You've gone with free solo. I think that was probably the best option. So I agree with you. Um, that's a really good choice. Um, but I still couldn't. Actually, it was one of them races. He, like you won't be surprised if Lord Paramount just fell in, you know, like just like yeah. falls in, you know, pings that pings the lids, he gets on with it and then just absolutely falls in. And then there's tr- there's blogger trumpeting <laughs> on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon. Good afternoon, Twitter. I'm on this, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, good selection. 11 or two free solo. That's with sky bet. 888 and bet Victor to kick off the round. Thank you, Quentin. And uh, I, I am against the fav in that. Um, I, I've got to take it on. Andy mm. Richmond. Right, but we're going with the same race then, the two Ooh. four, because I thought Lord Paramount was a horrible favourite as well. Oh, been wow. Been this, been 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 this is a fog on. This is a fog on lane. Nine to four, six to five, four to five, fell in last time out when he got the run of the race. Yes. And Mr. Varian uh, hand, it makes its handicap debut. When he takes hold, he's got a hat horses into all weather handicaps off the back of an all weather win i'm sure somebody will trumpet this 14 from 51 all 27 percent strike rate but can people i'm going to really start on this bandwagon because it's really starting to piss me off <laughs> strike rate i mean i've seen so many articles this week i'm not going to name them 
I, I saw one today where, I mean, the guy was quoting the strike rate and you know, they actually lost on level stakes profit. I just, yeah, um, they do that, it, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Can people start looking at winners above expected? That is the proper way to look at things like that. It uh, is, and also the place market. Do they do they make money in the place? So correct. in other words, yes. Well, yeah. Well, this this one, if you look at Varian's record, handicap debut from a, into all weather hand all weather handicaps off the back of an all weather win, fourteen fifty one, so twenty seven percent throw, fantastic. The wax, the winners above expected, is minus one point five four, and the level stake loss is six points. So yeah. whilst you have a very so, good uh, yeah. play, it's shit basically. So yeah. I'm going to go with friend of the show who got his Xmas money today. Uh, yes. Southern with uh, a Barwi. Um, uh, T. Stuart cool. Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Nice one, Stuart. I'm pleased to see Stuart uh, have a, a real comeback because he had a horrible turf season. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody yes. me saying. But yeah. um, good to see him bounce back on the old weather. He's banging the old winners in of late. And I'm going to go with Got No Dollars, um, who was fourth of 13 last time out at Kempton. Travelled strongly throughout the race. Um Looks as though he's going to be coming in. Well, he is coming into form too. There's been a couple of winners out of that race as well. The eighth and the eleventh have both won since then. So I'm going to go. Got no dollars to take with for the inform Stuart Williams to take on the Lord Paramount point on the nose. Lovely stuff. So I, I like that anyway because we, we've got we've got a fog on really. We've got a lay fog on uh, in Lord Paramount. Well, if you, uh, if you didn't yeah. want to do that, Lee, then Dutch mine and Quentin selections. Absolutely. So, so if, you, on each. if you take the 11 or 2 Quentin's free solo and you take the 4 to 1, and by the way, we had a complaint this week. Cool. Someone said on, on Barstool's Twitter said, can you stop please calling Denise the Stoke slut? <laughs> I agree with that. That's a disgrace. I will immediately stop doing this and I will call her the Port Vale harlot. <laughs> um, so that's 4 to 1. <laughs> So that's four, four to one. Got no dollars uh, with with the Port Vale Harlot with Beth, yes, yes, uh, got no dollars and Quentin Lumsden. So the pair pays fifteen oh eight, fifteen oh eight, fifteen oh eight against the Fav. Bit better value if you just don't fancy um, uh, just laying Lord Paramount on the exchange. I I expect a drifting Fav there with you two as well going go, going with that because I'm in agreement. Right, okay. Uh, switch the focus to uh, Lingfield, frozen and crunchy in places. And I am very keen now, especially after the defeat of Junk Canoe in the 515, which Baron Bowen uh, disposed off with ease, but a very lofty seven pound rise for that. Very harsh from the handicapper. Um, he'd, he'd seen enough of Baron Bowen. He, he didn't like that. Or seven pound for that was ridiculous. So, so the two to one available for Obsidian Knight again with the Port Vale Harlot seems the option because this horse um, has simply, you know, not had the run of the race and uh, in recent starts has got big sort of sectional upgrades. And uh, Obsidian Knight in the 12 over five at Lingfield, I, I think this is the one to be with. Even in a slowly run race, I'd be confident, which you're probably going to get. There's, it's not going to suit anyone as a slowly run race, but Obsidian Knight has proved it can half quicken off slowly run uh, races. And I do think the two to one is generous. And we will Buick in the saddle as well. I think I think that's the play. But just for a one point stake, uh, nothing exciting for me to, to kick us off there, really. But that, that's where I'm at for round one. Right, round two. Um, Andy, coming to you. Right. I'm, I'm going to be a bit dull and boring with this uh, all-weather stuff because I couldn't really find much at a price that I really liked. But no. the three o'clock, uh, Queen of Ipanema, um, Mr. Bowie, um, he was surely taking the piss with the three runs uh, in in, um, in Wolverhampton and Kempton uh, minor races, wasn't he? And uh, suddenly it appeared off a mark of 52. And this one has run through the handicap quite easily. I thought last summer it's only gone up to the only up three pounds for the last win, and I still think there's an awful lot to come from this horse. We'll go on improving. One nicely last time out by a neck from the aforementioned Obsidian Knight as well. So there's a little bit of a, a tie in for the two there. Uh, one off 80 last time out around Wolverhampton. I didn't really see an awful lot in the opposition to uh, to frighten her off tomorrow afternoon. Um, I'm not, I must admit, I'm not a massive fan of Lingfield. Um, and I just think she might just turn out to be a little bit better than this, than this lot. Um, Tequila Mockingbird's been well backed. I can, I could construct a case for that, but not with Hayley Turner on at all. 
I, I just cannot back anything with her on at all. Dread, uh, dreadful woman, Andy. Dreadful. The Viola, Viola won uh, this race last year when it was actually held at Southern over a furlong. And it was actually held over 11 furlongs last year there because they put no uh, 10 furlong trip. And I think just Queen of Ipanema. I'm surprised I sort of made her around a 2-1, 9-4 to four chance. I just think she's probably quite decent and I'll probably be backing her in a double with the three-point selection, which I shall get to ere long. Interesting. So nine or four for Andy, Queen of Ipanina, bidding for the sixth timer again with Buick up it's, in the plate. I mean, George Bowie has been really, if you look at his record following up in handicaps, it is absolutely superb. He's really yeah. good. I, I call him the modern day Prescott. Right. The, the inter, right. Some, something to, I could have, I could have waited for the, for the TV section for this, but um, I'll say it now, during the best bets around us, because no one listens to the TV section. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> So, so, so interesting stats here. The last 30 days at Lingfield, um, the leaders are four from 55 overall distances, of which two have won at odds on, oper- operating at eight winners below expectation in the last mm. 30 days. The track's riding deeper, so I wonder if the jocks are going too quick as usual, like they do around Leafy, and the, the, they're stopping, and, and, and it's suiting horses coming down the middle again. Um, you want to stay away from that that far rail. Yeah, oh, you see, that, dead, that is dead, quite yeah, a dead. Group at the but, moment. Yeah, that's a real swamp. It's interesting that just to get, uh, digress a minute. Subtle yesterday, it was really hard to come from off the pace. And yet yes. today, it's been a bet, the last three winners have all come from miles back. I, I right, I do think that, that again, again, it's simplistic things though. That the one race today at Subtle I saw. Uh, God, I've got Alzheimer's. Um, they, 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 were, they were doing 42 miles an hour down the back. And, and then no wonder they stopped. I mean, it's one of them jockeys get things in their heads. It's like, you know, the old Newcastle, oh, come to the stands rail sometime. Oh, you got to be on the stands rail at Newcastle. Yeah. So they all, they all come to the stands rail in a big group. And it's like, because jo- it's a jockey thing. Jockey, oh, he's suiting pace, you know, this and the other. But Lingfield, I genuinely think he's, he's, he's suiting middle down the track. Buick rode it to a T the other day. Didn't he have a treble? Well, I think he did. And, and yeah. he, he was unlucky not to have a four-timer because he got chinned on the, by the other Godolphin one ridden by James Doyle in the Maiden. And he was unlucky there. He, he, just, got, he just got pinned on the line. Um, <laughs> but he rode that to perfection as well. So he, that's that's the style at Lingfield. If you're an in-running player tomorrow, I mean, I mean, four from 55 front runners in the last 30 days, that's dreadful. That's utterly dry. And, and, and by the way, a lot of them are unplaced, end up unplaced. And you you imagine everyone in running wants to be on a front runner. So mm. the fact that, that that's that, that's how the Lingfield track's riding at the moment. May, but maybe that just might be that the jocks are just going normal Lingfield pace as they used to ride in Lingfield. Right, bomb out. Yeah. Stay off the rail. But, but you know, it's a quick track you, normally. So you, see, you want to be on the front. And in fact, prominent runners do very well there. And I think that's it. I think they're just probably getting the pacers wrong. But, but, but that's it. He's suit, he seems to be suiting uh, middle uh, track finishers mm. right now. And uh, that's the way I'd want to play it tomorrow if playing. So, okay, Andy. So a good selection there. Queen yeah. of Ipanina to kick us off for round two. I will, I will uh, uh, go second. Leave quite until last. And we have a klaxon. We've got a foghorn and a klaxon, mm. <laughs> right? So the foghorn lay. I'm gonna I'm gonna broadcast onto it. It's a foghorn lay with the, with the, with the varying horse. And uh, this is a, this is a klaxon because Queen of Apennina is a, is is my uh, two point bet. Uh, oh. Also, at uh, uh, what, what what price did I say, Andy? What nine price did I? Say? Nine or four. four. I'm sure yeah. that's a two to one Queen of Apennina. No, nine or four, nine or four. So, so yeah, me and Andy are on at nine to four for Queen of Apenida, generally available. Um, same reasons as Andy. I, I, I think she's got a lot in hand. I think the problem here, see, uh, see Serena of the shirts, uh, and we all love the shirt, but uh, this this filly is is very keen. And whilst she should improve for 10, she's not going to improve for 10 pulling like she does. She does a lot, lot wrong in her races. And I thought Queen of Ipanina, she's she's just improving her rate of knots. The three pound rise is nothing. Uh, Tequila Mockingbird had the complete run of the race last time. Complete run of the race, you know, and it, it's uh, sat in a lovely position. Might get the same again, you know, tomorrow, given that pace of the races might be a problem. But nevertheless, I did feel that the Bowie horse was value, and I'm not going on uh, too much because I agree with Andy what he said. So nine to four, we're joining in with the Claxon. Mm. Quentin Franks. 
Can you make it a fog on? Uh, I cannot, I'm afraid, leave. No. Uh, I, go, I go to Chelmsford for my uh, two-point oh. bet. <laughs> um, it comes in the opener there. Nice little naught to 55. Horse in question is a horse I backed, I think it was earlier in the week. Uh, last week, this time last week. Um, backed him at 11 to 4 in the morning. Nick Vedder kind of thought it was a not, solid 9 to 4 poke and went off 15.87 on the machine. So, shows what good form I'm in. <laughs> um, well... Yeah. Your, it's not necessarily your fault, that is it? No, they, they, they were the, the money came for the butler horse uh, measured moments. The money came in spades. I think it was trading odds on at various points in the day. Um, but Nick 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 Vedder ran well. It came from a long way back at Kempton, o- over seven furlongs. I thought the trip would suit a mile tomorrow. With I suspect there'll be some pace on Eagle Wide Freddy. I suspect will cart um, the girl on top of that. Bombastic should go forward. So nice nice pace to aim at. Strong on the clock the other day. Strong on the clock at Kempton. Yards finally hit some form. They've um they had a turbulent kind of start to the autumn, but they've you know, starting to get some winners. Vitesse Son kind of he had already Nick Vedder came what from half a length behind that at Wolverhampton. I, I suspect he'll reverse form on these terms. And then um you've got Lake Sand who has been really, really well supported into seven two, kind of got the ride to match its price last time out, ended up wide and ideal, kept on late. I think Nick Vedder, the time's not to play him now. He's seven to two now. I'll probably put him up two point win at Betfair S P or S P, whatever works better for you guys. No, 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 right. We'll give you, yeah, you, you can have Betfair SP. That's fine. So two points, Nick Better for Quentin, a Betfair SP. No, I agree with that. If you, anyone wants to do SP bet, Norman Adams did it the other week. Uh, he, <laughs> he, he did an SP bet. So, so yeah, if anyone wants to do SP bet or Betfair SP bet, that's fine because it's available for all. You can all like, you know, go on the machine and uh, quash Quentin's price. In fact, if you're following Quentin, they might be like 40. 4,700 at Betfair SP on Nick Vedder, forcing it down from sixes <laughs> to seven to two on the off. Bang! All, all Quentin's big followers. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, so that so that completes the two-point round. We come on to the max bets rounds. I'll kick us off, folks. It's another Bowie horse in the 225 at Lingfield. Very keen on Vision of Hope here. Bowie, as as, as we know, has done this with a few. Queen of Ipanina. Uh, he did one more on turf, I forget the name, last last year that won about five or six on the rounds. Vision of Hope, I'm not saying could be this, because I'm not sure, I can't be certain, but steps up massively in trip. This this is the, 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 the pedigree for Vision of Hope over this trip. It's a bad race. Um, the favourite is Um Sukwem, uh, ridden by the Mohammed Tahiti, the, 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 the Tabibti that the, the rode it last time. Uh, improved for the for the trip, but Vision Hope for me, I do think has got a lot lot more to come over this trip. Um, very very much caught the eye. I don't think anything to find. I think four to one with the Port Vale Harlot um, is the way forward for the three point on the nose. Vision of Hope for Bowie and a, a double for Bowie. Hopefully that afternoon. So that kicks us off. I'll go to Quentin Franks next. Ooh. My uh, Max Betley, uh, 1615 Chelmsford, and it comes in the shape of man on a mission. Um, I like this race. I like the setup of the race for it. There's not, there's absolutely no pace in the race. I'm, it's kind of missed the, missed the beat at the start um, the last twice. Um, Chelmsford, he was back from two to one into, I think, tips on or something. Missed it by five, did well to get within a length and a half of the of the, of the winner that day. Lingfield, he did break the start before that. Sat up with a pace, one, one well, form looks solid. Um, he was unconsidered in the market, considering the market sport for him at Chelmsford when he missed the break. He was unconsidered in the market the other day behind... Um, Higher mate who seem to have the turbo diesel in because they knocked that off the boards into four to five, I think it was. But man of the mission, he, he's got the figures on the clock. I, I don't like the opposition. Mimoset, I think, is a bit soft. Embala, who was just ahead of man in the mission here back at Chelmsford, had the run of things and has gone up in the weights. Mimu's a bit JD. Um, yeah. Don't really get the support behind um, Funky Monkey. Mr. 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 Funky Monkey. <laughs> say that yes. <laughs> um, don't really get the support behind that. It's not really done anything on the clock. Um, and I don't think we'll have the pace out that is required. I genuinely think if Man of the Mission breaks, he wins. 
that that's pretty much it. Four to one is massive. Yeah, no. Three, three points win, four to one. Love it. Four to one with Sky Bet, William Hill, eight, 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 Bet Victor. Um, I'm not mentioning any of the terrible, terrible makers, the rest. Um, so, so, so they're all terrible, but anyway, they're, they're even worse than terrible. But, but Quentin, there, four to one, three, three pointer. Um, very, very good, Quentin. And to finish the round off, Andy Richmond, they're inspecting at Kempton as we record. Oh, they, yes, uh, yes, yes. Not, the, not surface, or, surface or fog? Surface. The, the, the jockeys are out. The, they've got the sticks out. They're perking them in. And it, this is, you know, I, here's, it's, a, here's an idea for you. Why have we run, well, okay, I'll, one meeting's in Ireland, but why don't they just move the evening stuff to the afternoon and run it in the afternoon? Because Andy, is that, is, it's, it's actually due to fog, by the way. All right. Well, no, uh, no, 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 it's not. No, it's not. They're actually poking the stick in. Honestly, uh, I'm watching them now. Poking it into the fog, are they? But <laughs> no, well, Je- they? Jess Stafford just tweeted saying it's due to fog, so I assumed she would know, but apparently not. No, I, I can, I can see. You can see the like, like the other day at Huntington. You could, you after the uh, uh, Wing Canton, sorry, you couldn't see, you couldn't see them until the last fifty yards, like That's literally. True. No, no, look, 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 Kieran Fallon's out there. He, he's banging his heel into, into the, into the, into the Absolutely. thing. Look at him. They've got the sticks out. Terrible, these jobs. So why are um, they in the afternoon? afternoon? Exactly that. that. Right, that'd so. Be, that'd be the, just start early enough so you can, you can do that. That'd be, uh, that'd be, I should, just to digress before we get to the three point, I see our friend Rona McNally had a winner with Drill Deal. Drill Deal, yes, he shoved it right up him. <laughs> Yeah, straight, straight up the Ringo star, straight in the ball line. Right, um, on to the three pointer. I'm not going to be very, I'm not going to be very original here. Last race at Lingfield, best race of the day on a day where you could use the old Ferrero Rocher advert and say, Ambassador, you do spoil me on ITV, don't you? With four class six handicaps and two class twos. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing the team go through that lot and, t- and talk it up. Um, but I'm going to go with Algiers. Um, it is the best race of the day. Um, people have tried to make cases for Forrester Dean and Harovian beating Algiers this time out. I could not see that at all. I know it's a short price. I'm not really a short price backer, but, you know, this all weather stuff isn't <laughs> isn't really for me. Uh, but, um, but um, I mean, he, he won. He, he ran well last time out. I mean, he only just missed out to a very progressive horse last time out. Uh, and he finished three and a quarter lengths ahead of the second favourite Herovian uh, that day. I didn't really see how that form was going to be turned around. And he's fairly lightly raced sort of the all weather. He missed out last week. Would he, would he miss out on the Churchill Strakes by a short head of this track? Um, yep. I thought he was a breeze. I mean, I'm, I'm not one for backing short prices, but I thought he was a reasonable play. If you wanted a short price one, I should probably do him in a double with Queen of Ipanema. But I have three points on the best price that I can find on Algiers. I'm certainly not knocking it because the the pace setup, he, he just gets yeah. his own way. And I know I've commented on about, you know, like it's hard to make the running, but yeah. if they're just going to let one, this have, have the have the front one end. One worry is that he, being drawn stall one, that he gets him off the rail and doesn't run him right around the inside and down into the swamp. So as he turns, you know, it's not so bad running on the rail round the sort of down the far side and round the back. Um, but when he gets into the straight, is that uh, is it Jack Mitchell? Or, swing wide, yeah, Mitchell, Mitchell swing wide enough. down the middle and don't stay on that far rail because if he does, I think he might get done. But um, hopefully, because uh, common sense will prevail and it will get him off that rail. And Algiers, I mean, he's a, he's a pretty, you know, he's a decent horse. He was rated 110 when he beat pr- pr- protagonist, and he's been rated 110. He beat protagonist what 106 in a York handicap in October. I think he's a decent horse. The Crisfords have been in good form as well. So on a day when I lacked a little bit of inspiration, although when we go through the TV races, there are a few longer price ones. I thought he was fair enough to have uh, three points on him. Uh, and I say I'll probably do him in a double with Queen of Ipanema. No, no it's, it's good reasoning, really. I mean, I mean, 11 to 10 against, well, that's with Betfred, uh, Coral uh, and uh, the Magic Sign. The magic sign. We're, we've not we've not said that for years, have we? Uh, <laughs> they're just not the magic sign. There's, not, there's nothing magic about Ladbrokes anymore. Nothing, nothing. No, no. no. 
it's like <laughs> it's nostalgia in the game. Um, but yeah, but, but yes, yeah, so it's good reasoning, Andy, because he, he is the best horse, and it's a case of if he's ridden correctly. And like you say, the the reason that the the slingshot at Lingfield uh, works because if you look at the the miles per hour, um, if you stay to the rail, so whether you think the rail's dead or not in terms mm. of slower ground, the miles per hour you can get kicking off that last bend by being say two by about three wide if you look at the the the, the sort of like the the kick that they get and it's obvious you if you if you if you if you're going round to a tight rail you're going slower because you're you're going tighter so, mm-hmm. so so that's the old slingshot effect um so for punters that aren't aware of that that's why probably when you're on the inside at Linkfield coming down the straight you ain't you ain't got the miles per hour the the, mm. uh, the wider ones have got uh, uh, coming down the the, the, me- the momentum as they say so there we go so that w- so hopefully you'll agree with some of our bets we've got a fog only in terms of uh, uh, Lord Paramount at Chelmsford and we've got a klaxon from me and Andy in um, mm. in uh, the Bowie horse um, something if I mean gin's kicking in now it does it does after it does after a while um, so anyway on to the on, Talking of bookmakers, Lee, if anyone is searching for a uh, a late Christmas present for uh, anyone who likes horse racing, I'm just about halfway through the Victor Chandler book at the moment. Put your life on it, uh, which is a pretty uh, pretty good and interesting read. Um, really? Written, yeah, written by uh, by Jamie by written by Jamie Reed. In fact, any of Jamie Reed's racing books are excellent. If you're looking for uh, a book to uh, for a buy for a, a a, uh, a horse racing enthusiast. There ain't many good horse racing books out this year, to be honest with you. There's usually some, but it's still Victor Chandler, High Life and Fast Times uh, by Jamie Reed and Victor Chandler. Uh, and it is a, it's a pretty decent read, actually. Uh, gives you good, in, good insight into the, the family. Of course, they owned, they grew up around um, sort of Hoxton, around the East End of London, where my grandfather was also a bookmaker, uh, one of the biggest in London at one time. And uh, of course, they owned uh, Walthamstow Stadium as well. But it's a good read, really good read. Good stuff, Andy. Because we we had that we had that topic on a sermon recently. So any books to read, Andy recommends uh, the Victor Chandler one by Jamie Reed. Right, Chelmsford ITV Racing two hundred five race. Um, Quentin uh, no likey no likey. He sits out um, this one because <laughs> he, he he he's tipped up Nick Vedder. Um, so me and Andy to to go through this one. I, I'm thinking. Um, Lake Sand really caught my eye last time. Uh, it was incredible, really. Like it like went through the race like it was a really, really well handicapped horse, and wasn't sort of meant 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 to win. Kept wide, nothing from the saddle. Um, but he's got, Lake Sand's got a history of being a bit of a git. Um, you know, he, 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 well, well, he had he had two wins, one after the one after the other, and then that was that. When it was like one of them like big fireworks that, that that flies off, and then you you put the next firework down, and it goes off like one of them ones that like a snowstorm. You know the old standard fireworks when you're you should a never re, you should never return to a lit firework. You know, yeah, yeah, not you know the the, the <laughs> one the ones that won't even burn your hand. Um, um, yeah, them ones. So so so, so lakes and. I felt was was interesting, but when you're dealing with these kind of level of horses, it's difficult. I get Quentin with Nick Vedder. Nick Vedder's a real talented type at this level. Um, so, Andy, what you, what do you think on this? Well, you, I, 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 sort of, I nearly went for Nick Vedder. The one slight thing that puts me off him, and I, and I, I take on board Quentin's comments about the pace in this race, because uh, Eagle-Eyed Freddy's going to go bombing off in front. For anyone who wants a, a cheap back to lay, um, that should be it. Um, although it depends, that always depends how near that uh, the favourite sits to that. A lot of people don't get yeah. that. The favourite acts as the pivot on the price yeah. of the front runners. So if Vitesse Son, who can run prominently, sits close to Eagle Eye Freddy, I think that might hold the price a bit. And the thing I always look at Chelmsford when they race is that I always think it's, it is a bit of a front runner's track and they not much comes from the back there. So that was the one slight little thing that worried me about Nick Vedder, but he is incredibly well handicapped and he is quite a talented horse. I think he's far better than his mark. If you want to put yourself off Lake Sand, just go and watch his run on the 10th of June at Chepstow. <laughs> that will put you off back in. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> um, I've so, seen it. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I think you're taking board your comments about being a bit of a git. So whilst not having any really strong opinions on the race, 
I think that um, as long as the uh, the price doesn't disappear over the hills like it did last time out, then Quinton is on the right track with Nick Vedder. Yeah, no, I, I probably I probably agree. If if I had to if I had to go one, that it would be Nick Vedder. But Thrasher on Lake Sand, Thrasher. <laughs> To thrash it up. Yeah, go and have a look at that run of chips, though. That'll put your fat in like stand for life. It's one of those. It's like you know, like on the, the, the there's a there's a great. Uh, I don't know if you've ever played PlayStation games or whatever, like the uh, great one jockey or whatever. And yeah, they, good game. Good game. they did they did a mock up of a of, of a zoo, <laughs> like a real accurate like the, the old zoo that you know won the uh, international at York, and 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 it was amazing that if you smacked it. <laughs> It had down to like, <laughs> like it just, and you got top energy, you got hundred percent energy, and then it just go, like, <laughs> she like, smacked it. I'd have liked to have ridden Archibald on Group One jockey. That would have been interesting. I know. I, you see, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I think the, the, the programmers of that, I think, did some amazing stuff. Um, I don't think it was. It might not be called a zoo, but it, you know, it was a zoo because it was in the, it was in the, those silks. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 it, it was amazing, you know. You just smacked it, and and the spirit went from like high to boom, do not, do not, do zero. Not just a, don't you hit me? Yeah. You know? <laughs> anyway, anyway, sorry, so we're digressing here badly. Yeah. But th- this is it. This is what they do. This is this is this is where we're at. Anyway, so we'll move on to the. Uh, well, no, we don't need to move on because this is the fog on race. And we've done two forty today. We've we've done it today, mm-hmm. and this is it. So so we we're not Lord Paramount, you know. Uh, yeah, we're against that. Uh, Three fifteen, the last tally race at Chelmsford. Thank God, the Jack Berry House Handicap Classics, not to fifty two. That's what I said, Ambassador. You do spoil me. Yes, yes. Uh, Elegant Ellen um, has come from the Dirty Irish, and I, I think this is a pro- possible plot. Maybe she's not not from fifteen. Which is, you know, not really a glowing um, recommendation, but she has been competitive of a lot higher marks than this, and uh, she did not have the run of the race last time. Um, she found herself in an impossible position and came through late. And I just worry some of these. Do you remember like the rules where the the BHA said you can't run on Irish horses? And I've got this feeling Dennis Gerard Hogan to Amy Murphy is really. Dennis Gerard Hogan to Dennis Gerard Hogan. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 like, it, this is off fifth date, and it's it's a bad race, and it's one of them. If if you could see one absolutely sluicing up, it would be Elegant Ellen. What, what we're thinking, chaps? The only worry, again, I've got is that it, it can be slow away and has to come from off the pace, but you could see it knifing through the field off this sort of mark. I'd love yeah. to see old Shamshon win for uh, for Stuart Williams, the eleven year old. It's and it's twenty five runs since his last win now. Um he's off <coughs> off a mark of forty eight. <clears throat> his last win came off seventy one and he's won off a mark of eighty nine. Can you remember can you remember as a two year old where this where this horse ran? He ran in the Breeders' Cup juvenile turf. Incredible. He actually 11. did. I've got he it. Actually, and he was actually also joint favourite for the Mill Reef won by Supplicant. Finished fifth of finished seventh, uh, fifth of seven, and he won his first two career starts. And who trained him in his first two career starts? Richard Annan Senior. And he's wow. still going. Oh, wow. <laughs> so no, like, this is good. I'd like to see. I'd like to see him win. But he, that that was uh, if you go way back. But it is twenty five runs since his last win. Now, poor old chap. There was another one I thought caught the eye. Here. I don't know what Quinton thought of this one. Horse called Black Box. If you watch his last run um, on the 9th of December after three months off, mm. that looked, he raced a little bit keenly, but it wasn't the worst run in the world. And he's another one, another Brisland horse, I sort of keeping an eye on. And he was yeah. sort of, and I was sort of vaguely interested. And it was in a 0 to 52, I can assure you, it was a very vague interest. But it just, I just happened to be going back through the Wolverhampton card. It's life in the bus lane here. Yeah. And um, the markers slid, slid down. I mean, he first, he first, I mean, literally at the start of this year, it was rated 67. And in what, 
four run, three runs since then, four runs since then. He's down to a mark of 54. Sorry, she is down to a mark of 54. Um, yeah, Matt, yes, a five-year-old man. Vaguely, <laughs> vaguely interesting in a race which you can't really describe yeah. as having a bit of depth in it. So if I was yeah. going to take a bit of a punt on one, um, I would, uh, I'd probably have a little look at... Um, well, I might have a look at Shamshon, just a heart rule in the head. Well, it's certainly interesting, Yard. Yeah, I mean, they bowled me a googly the other day with evasive power. I've been waiting to back that over shorter. And then, and yeah. then, then, then Grace Mac and, Mac and Cheese has decided to win over a mile unbacked at 20s. And I'm sat there, you know, like, like <laughs> you could, you can imagine my face, like, like mouth open, uh, you know. And, and uh, you know, I mean, this is, this is what game we're in. It's a fantastic game. I mean, it's, it's all like, it is, it's like find the lady, isn't it? Three cups and yeah. balls. And we're a, all trying to guess. A little bit like, I think this race is definitely, you could sum that up as find, yeah. find the lady. There's a, you know, there's a couple of others in here. Amazing and Maya that might be better suited by a course where you can come from off the pace, which you, they never seem to run it at. A View from the Stars has been a nibble at that. It was like Black Box has been a little bit of a nibble for that as well. You've got Elegant Ellen in there and dear old Shamshon, who's absolutely lobbed in. Yeah. <laughs> so we've of, we've, we've done really well here on the not to 50 so I think it's a great <laughs> th- th- this should make the mainstream media and also to finish off this mainstream media preview Quentin, Black Box also had a number one UK hit with Ride on Time <laughs> <laughs> let me ride on time yeah. uh, he, he was interesting though, I, I think the dropping trip will suit him to be honest, like you uh, just kind Quentin. of shaped like uh, 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 uh. Yes, all, uh. the, all the same, you can't say you can her nowadays <laughs> can you um, <laughs> Them, them, or, or it. Them, they, um, it's, yes. Uh, the, the one that caught my eye was um, Breezy and Bright. Kevin start up for Mike Murphy and uh, Mr. Keedy. Uh, further back than ideal on the 8th of November, kind of staying on shape well. Um, absolutely no chance in an amateurs event. Went God, nearer the stand side rail at Wolverhampton. Handicap has given him two back for a run that you could just strike a line from. He's kind of drifting out to about 16 to 1. That's probably enough to tempt you to have a small bet on him. Mm, that's about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. That'll do. Yeah. I think, I think do you know what? That's one of the finest not to 52 previews <laughs> in the UK today. And it needs to more not to 52s, please. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this, is, this is how we do it. Um, someone else sang that as well, didn't they? This is how we do it. Who was that producer? No, she didn't know. Right. Anyway, 115 <laughs> Lingfield is the first Channel 4 race of five that they've managed to fathom out. Hopefully, if it again goes ahead, Lil Kyan is a currently favourite of four to one. Daryl Holland. Yeah, not sure about that one. But uh, any any thoughts on this, chaps? I was I, I nearly went for a little split stake here on the Defiant or Mixed Spirit. I think the Defiant's definitely better on the all-weather than he is on turf, although he has one on turf. But he's three from six at Lingfield. He, his record in class five or lower is pretty good. The last time he ran in class five was on the all weather over a course and distance and he won it off 68. And then he ran in class four here last time out off 73 and didn't run too badly. Dropped him back into this. It's one of those races where you probably threw them all in, throw the majority in the air and you probably get about eight different results out of 10 runnings. Yeah. But I thought he had a little bit of a chance. He's, ob- he's obviously got a class barrier in his profile. And I think the, def- the Defiant would be one of them. The other one was Mick Spirit, who, again, another class drop. Third of 12 at Lingfield last time out. Didn't think that was a bad run. If you were looking for a couple of tiny bets in the race, split state between Mick Spirit and the Defiant. That was where I got to. Go so Andy. He's better than I can come up with. Quentin? One for me was Amor de Vida. If anything, it's a trappy race. But kind of what you've said about the, the pace of the tracks, kind of made me put the brakes on that a little bit it's done did well enough to win last time out um a bit of a tricky ride she can be but still think there's there's upside to her she's come back down the weights uh previous winning form off a 72 um she's capable here didn't particularly like the hughes horse but the market's kind of telling us that it's seven or two out to seven or one now i suspect i won't have a bet in the race if i it, it's kind of early there's two races before it but one's a novice so if i can have a gauge of how the track's riding then i may play a more davida yeah uh, just the idiot peter crouch in the subtle field there quentin 
Um, yes. Uh, to deal with. Um, <laughs> right, the 150 race is the uh, six furlong uh, Bet UK's Acker Club five pound free bet handicap. See, plug plugs away here. Bit of sponsorship mm. here, maybe. Um, no. Racing abandoned. <laughs> yeah, racing, <laughs> yeah, racing <laughs> abandoned. Uh, uh, Total run affair. Admirable lad is currently five to two favourite for the Chelsea Bantam and Joey Haynes. Uh, uh, mafia team, uh, but, but, but this, this this is in good form. Uh, any any views here? Help me. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I, go, go on, Quinn. You, I had, a, I had a strong view on Leviathan, but um, mm-hmm. nine to two, I think, is more than fair. Decent pace to aim at. Big back end section was last time out. It was yeah. three, three deep at Kempton. Um, I think he's in fair old Nick, to be honest, and against a bunch that aren't, you, you can't really, there doesn't look a massive plot amongst these um, poor animals. And um, yeah, they're relatively exposed. So I think he's the one with the upside and I had him kind of more of a three to one poke rather than nine to two. Yeah, that, that, that's 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 the one I, I think, I, I, watching the last run, that's the one I, I probably want to be with. Uh, risk clusterfuck in the saddle and nine to two available. Uh, Andy, anything to add to this? My only interest in this race is that a friend of mine owns a third of Twilight Mischief, but I won't Ooh. tell you. Told me. I won't. I, won't I think. I, I don't think he's expecting too much without putting anyone away. Um, wow. He's off to the sale soon as well. Um, Twilight Mischief. Um, it's not one of his better buys. He described it to me. <laughs> My only interest. I hope. You, I hope she runs well for him. There's been money for this, Andy. Twelves into seventeen to two. Yeah. Well, I think I don't think it's any of uh, my friend's money at all. Um, and I could actually say that hand on heart as well. But um, I think with like you boys, Lothian ran well last time out. I'm just never quite sure at this level. Is it consistent enough? Will it follow up? I just I, I literally put on my notes here. Horrible race. Move on. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I think that sums it up. Um, but yeah, I, I I agree with Quentin. I think if gun to the head and I'm really bored, uh, Lothian is the choice. Yeah. 225, it gets a little bit better. We're going to a class six, not to 60. And uh, it's uh, Pablo Prince, who's seven to two joint favourites with Um Saquem at the moment on the betting. Vision of Hope, four to one, the George Bowie horse that I've tipped. So I have to sit this out. Um, Quentin and Andy, go for it. Uh, my overriding thought about this is where's the pace going to come from in the race? Because mm. it could end up a right old mess. Because I could really only find, is it Pledge of Peace as one who'd like to go forward? Yeah. You do handicap David Johnson, Mesbar, who doesn't really look to have done much, and the one that you've already aptly gone through in Vision of Hope. Therefore, Pablo Prince, he needs a strong gallop to run at this horse. Now, he'd be one I'd be looking to possibly lay in running if he doesn't get a strong gallop. I thought Ship to Shore showed a little bit of promise last time out. And I wouldn't write off um, Savoy Brown, who was 7th of 14 behind Umsequain last time out, but didn't get the run of the race. It's actually been dropped a couple of pounds. It's the sort of race where, to be honest with you, I wouldn't want, whilst um, you know, uh, being uh, fully c- cognizant with your thoughts on a uh, vision of hope, I'd probably rather take a chance on a couple here. Umsequain as well. I mean, was that a bit of a flash in the pan last time out? Did they get lucky with that last time out? When up well, he was just up in trip for the first uh, time, and 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 the, the, there is argument in the pedigree that yeah. that he, you know it could Took just have been suited by further. Took yeah, the year off. It was a trainer's first win since July 2019. Although he didn't have many runners, yeah. so that's probably a a little bit of a, a misnomer. Yeah. I I just thought if there was if I was going to take a chance with one. Um, one of the Atwater horses in here, Savoy Brown, I just didn't. I thought he was a little bit unlucky last time out, um, and shipped to shore and showed a bit of promise. It just wasn't a race I really wanted to get involved with, and just those two at double figure prices looked vaguely interesting. No, because of QF, I will be dutching up your one Lee with um, um, Andy's one, Savoy Brown. Um, yeah. I don't particularly trust uh, Rab Havlin on Pablo Prince. I'm Sequain. You can argue the case pedigree, but do you really want to punt it to follow up at seven or 200 or 30? Not, not really. With not what really. it beat. No, not with yeah. what it beat. Yeah. Like, it, it got the beating of Savoy, Savoy Brown last time out, but it was Savoy Brown's first start in two odd months, um, troubling running as well. Went yeah. for the race well enough. He's got, he's got some figures around here, namely 
further made this year that suggests he, he can be better than a full a race can drop his way off a mark of 47 they handicaps given a couple back and, and carver takes three off um I think what is he sixteens or something? So sixteens touched up with your four to one, seven to two poke. That will that will do for me. Yeah, Bowie's not win that. I'd shoot it. Right, three o'clock. Um, <laughs> we, we we go on to the win, win, Winter Oaks Trail. Terrible. This Petter are on board now, complaining like the BHA. They're always they're always complaining. <laughs> so the three o'clock, the the, the ten foot long Winter Oaks Trail. Phillies handicap. Um, this is probably a better race. Nice prize money. This probably deserves maybe a little bit better field. Give it a naught to one hundred five. And uh, what have we got the top rated in this chaps? It's ninety seven, eight pounds below top mark. You've got a seventy nine rated horse, a six as Perkin Tequila Mockingbird, uh, with a realistic chance of winning. Uh, a twenty three thousand pound prize winner. I think this highlights the problems in British racing, Andy. Andy at the moment. Mm, it's not. It's not. It's not great, is it? Um, no. I mean, I mean, a race like this, you'd be thinking. With the, um, with the news that Kempton has been abandoned this evening, is that the, is that the <laughs> third or fourth? Is that the third or fourth all all weather? Got to call. Got to call it a different name yeah. soon. All weather. Oh no no no! Is this abandoned? <laughs> You can't. You, you don't expect them to. It's minus seven, minus eight, whatever. You can't expect them to. It, the, the, the track freezes. It is what it is. Oh, I'm yeah. not one of these. All weather, like some of the the moaning of people. That, you know, it's been over the last few days. There was people moaning that we got too much racing. You get a few abandoned, and they're moaning that it was that, 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 that they're being called off. It's just yeah, it's it's one of those. It's difficult because, but like Andy, we've touched. Uh, did we do this off air on or on air? I can't remember. Okay. Uh, off air to the producer. <laughs> uh, memory bank there from Jin. Um, yeah. But yeah, we, we did such a lot of this. And Andy makes a good point, really. I think, is it right to be racing in the evening when the temperatures are like this? What, like, why can't they move the race times back? Like Andy, like, like Andy said, uh, pre shows that sim- simply move Kempton to the afternoon and get the meeting done. And And what's wrong with that? You know, no. it's a bit like the, the the low sun, right? If they're not going to run, if they're not going to work out where the sun's going to be in the sky at certain points, which surely they'd know from past meetings, you know, it's not difficult to work out. So, so when we're dolling fences off, I get hurdles. I mean, it doesn't matter hurdle races. I mean, hurdle races. Well, shit. that's that, that's that's a good point, Lee. Is it why not run all the chase races first and then run? Yes. The, if it, if it doesn't matter so much with hurdles, with fences, it does actually matter. That yes. Really, Traps in the race. I know some people say it does with hurdles as well, but I think we can sort of get round that. And 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 you know, I, I I don't buy the fact that people say, oh, you, you know, you could run up. I mean, I was literally, I went, I popped out yesterday afternoon and was waiting for a friend to pick me up. You could not see with the low sun here. You could not see a thing. I mean, I didn't see his car until it was like twenty yeah. yards in front of me. So I wouldn't want to be riding a horse at 35, 40 miles no. an hour. I'm sorry, I just wouldn't. So and you can go on about, oh, it doesn't happen in France. It doesn't happen, you know, wherever. Absolute bullshit. You know, uh, some of these people should go and ride horse in it then. That, yeah, that. no, I agree with that. And, and, and that's the thing, like you say, by, by changing the times and, or just working out where the sun will be at a certain point, mm. we need to be more dynamic and be able to say even the day before, even when decks are announced, right, the BHA then needs to say, right, it's going to be a very, very uh, uh, sunny day. There's, there's going to be no clouds in the sky, so we need to move this. So we've now announced that the chase races have been moved to the 12:10, the 12:40. Exactly. You know, and then the jumps fans get what they want because everyone finds watching a chase exhilarating when it jumps a fence. And I get that. That it cre- there's, there's a certain fan base, obviously it's Cheltenham, Cheltenham crowds love a jumper and and love watching jumping action. So the last thing you want is like five fences dollar. It's common sense. But Same since- with. But since when were the words dynamism and the BHA seen in the same sentence? Oh, disgraceful yeah, organisation. Absolutely disgraceful. Thing, <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, it literally is. I mean, there, Andy, that they are. Oh God, don't get me started on them. They, they are so. It's all there for the salaries, the pensions. Yep, they have. Yeah. They, they cannot affect the game because they haven't got the expertise to affect the game. They haven't got the nows to affect the game. They can't even sit down with the stakeholders. This this should be for Sunday, but anyway, um, mm, they, they can't sit down sit down with the stakeholders and 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 debate properly. 
They're in the back pockets of the stakeholders. And this is the problem. The stakeholders are running the sport into how they want it moulded, not the BHA. The BHA should be running this, saying, no, no, it's it's tit for tat. If you want this, we want this. And it's give and take. But the BHA don't. They just they just literally do absolutely nothing. A disgrace of an organisation. That's for another show. Right. We'll, we'll... Exactly. <laughs> Where were we? Well, yeah, the, the Phillies handicap, the Queen of Eponina. So, so me and Andy have Claxon. Quentin, gone. Quentin, yeah. finish this race off. Uh, I'm I'm with you. It's, I want to take like friends of the show, Simon Rowlands. He's uh he's put up C uh, to Zarina. <laughs> I I I I hate her. Um, yes. There's she's a hard puller. There's something about her when she knuckles down. She just just looks awkward. Her, her stride says she'll she'll appreciate the trip, but steadily run race around here. I don't think she will um she's got like you said lee she's gonna do too much wrong uh tequila mockingbird i think you would back the second that day when that one dino um oh, that well would, positioned yeah, it yeah. would have beat her easy yeah 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 um queen and ipanina is the bet here solid progressive uh tactically versatile as well and and, and and with buick up top not not too much not to like it was four for my list of bets to be honest um nine to four i think's more than fair yeah and to finish the show then the 333 linkfield uh andy's in his box because he's I'm gone sure. he's, he's gone a a, a, a trois uh mm-hmm. points um algiers and um so so me and quentin have got to discuss this and i'm gonna keep it brief because i agree with andy even though I, I don't like the front running angles for linkfield but like andy says if jack mitchell keeps algiers off that dead rail and just gets that slingshot turning for him and quickens on I can't see anything else reversing the form, Quentin, maybe. You hit the nail on the head. Um, it was five to four, six to five earlier. Um, if, if, it's the last race today. If it goes ahead, you've you've got six races before it to see if, if, front, if the front's playing. If the front's playing, just steam in and, uh, yeah, if, if they don't reverse form with that. Yeah, good stuff. Right, that's it, folks. We're back on Sunday with me, uh, John, hopefully, after his... Uh, <coughs> I mean, they might not find him after tonight. Um, but, you know, uh, me, John, and Chris, Sunday. Uh, to to and, and, and warned off punter David Greenwood is on the show <laughs> on Sunday. Yes, for some more Ben chat. That's what we like. We, we, we love it all. Shove it up the BHA. Um, that's on Sunday to come. And uh, we'll mention the, uh, the the Cotty of 2022. Uh, obviously, we put it out to uh, to punters and uh, that didn't work so well. So we, we, we're going to we're going to put our heads on, on the chopping block on Sunday for the Cotty Award of 2022. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show tonight with me, Andy and Quentin. We put us all into this and it's not easy with 0 to 52s. We're the most entertaining podcast of 0 to 52 and 55 handicaps. There you go, folks. That's all from us. Bye for now. <laughs>